Well, whether you like your farm all small, medium, or large, Stu Paquette has a little bit of everything here at Paquette's Farm Mall Museum in Leesburg, Florida. Stu, tell us just a little bit more about why you're doing what you're doing with all these farm malls and international tractors. Well, I, I was always uh, into a history. I was a, always been a history buff. And uh, when I decided that I was going to do this, I read the book called uh, Corporate Tragedy which was a history of International Harvester. And I said, wow, what a, what a history they've had and what a time they've had, what a battle through their business life that they had. And now they're gone and it's unbelievable that they're gone. But I said, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I like the history, I'll go back and I'll try to build something in, uh, in dedicating to the, the farm all and uh, International Harvester history and the McCormick Deering people. And that's what we've tried to do. We've tried to uh, get one one of everything that they made, and uh, I I thought that was going to be an easy project. That you'll never see that because they did a lot of stuff and around a long time. But it's uh, interesting, and everybody that comes just loves the idea that we're trying to save the little implements, the little pieces that they made, the bolts, nuts and bolts that they made, and uh, it's really been a been a pleasure. And I know the people that come to see it uh, enjoy it. The passion for IH does run deep with uh, farm tractor collectors, collectors of all kinds. Yeah. Have you really had even not only national but international attention to the museum here? Yes, we have. We've had people from uh, Australia, South America, uh, Netherlands, Holland, England, Germany, uh, Russia. We had one guy from Russia. They had some farm malls in Russia back way back in the 20s. No doubt Farmall fans are international. Tell us a little bit about the tractor we've got right here. It's an International 130. Yes, the 130 took the place of the Super A. And uh, they started building these in 1956, 57, and 58. And uh, the 130 was basically the same tractor as the, uh, as the Farmall, Super, Super, Super A Farmall. And they ended up... Uh, they changed the compression a little bit to get a little more horsepower. But other than that, it was pretty much uh, only the three years that they made them. And they made about 9,000 of them at the time. Oh, not very many of them around. This one sold, I think, you told me, for about $2,000 new back yeah. in the 1950s. Yeah. What do you think the International 130 was uh, popular for? Well, they, they used them. The A's were very popular in the tobacco country up in Kentucky. They, they ran, that's what they ran, all Super A's and 100s there. And uh, the 130 came out, and they were still growing tobacco, so that that was a big. I know they were, used a lot of those there. And when you watch the 130 rolling by, one of the things you notice is that the the seat is offset; it's not dead center. Right. Tell me a little bit about cultivation and what that really meant for farmers. Right, the cultivation was when they put the when they offset the engine, it was so the operator wouldn't have to bend over to see what he was his crop, or he would make sure that he was on the row and not in the plant and running over the plants. So that cultivation was was quite a innovation when they did that. What do you like best about Farmall tractors, International tractors, Red Power? They they just they just classy. I just like they just classy looking. When when 1939, when they decided they were going to make the Letta series, they got this uh, Lowry, Richard Lowry, out of California to come out. They wanted to change the design. He came out and he designed the tra that Letta series tractor, tapered the tanks, put a grill in it. It's such a difference, such a contrast between that and the F models. And at the same time, International decided that they wanted to change their logo. They wanted to go from their big C and a big C with an IH inside of that. And he was trying to come up with this IH tractor and uh, come up with that logo for him. And he didn't know what to do it. And he finally came up with the one that you ha that they have today and we have here is uh, that IH. And of course, what that is. The, the tires are the two a, the outside of the two H's, and the axle that goes across is the H, and the I is the tractor, and the head is the little dot on the top is the farmer. And I have guys that have been on farms all their life, and they didn't know that. All right, Stu, thanks for hosting Classic Tractor Fever here at your museum. Well, thank you for coming. It was a pleasure meeting you guys. <laughs> Hey there, thanks for catching Classic Tractor Fever. If you'd like to see more Red Power, be sure to check out these other classic stories. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep those classic tractor stories rolling.